August 9th, St. John Baptiste Vianney, also known as the Cure of Ars or the Parish Priest of Ars. He was born on May 8th, 1786, in a little village at Dardilly near Lyon. He grew up a herd boy, shepherding the cattle and sheep of his father's farm in the meadows on either side of the little river Planches. He made his first communion when he was 13. Five years later, he told his father that he would like to become a priest. But his father was unwilling, for he could not afford to educate his son, having already had to provide for other members of the family, and he could not spare him from the work of the farm. And it was not until he was twenty that John could get permission to leave home for the neighboring village of Ikulai, where the Abbey Bailey had established a presbytery school. His studies were always a source of great trouble to him. Although he tried, he was a very poor student and then seminarian. He had to make extraordinary effort to follow his studies at the seminary and twice failed the examinations required before ordination. At age 30, barely managing to complete the course, he was finally ordained. The bishop sent him to a village in southern France, the village of Ars. There he began his priestly life, which would permeate all of Europe with its light and from there spread throughout the world. In the end, he was canonized a saint by Pius XI in 1925 and proclaimed patron of parish priests. He became an extraordinary preacher. He prepared his sermons the best he could, then he studied them. They were not sermons touching on the highest topics of theology. They were common instructions for the people. But when he taught, he spoke with such conviction, with such a great love of God, with words so blessed that the graces of those sermons were communicative and touched all who heard them. In his book, Soul of the Apostle, Dom Chatard relates this telling fact. An impious lawyer went to Ars to mock its unlearned priest, but he returned converted. Someone asked him, what did you see there? He answered, I saw God in a man. That is, the presence of God was in St. John Vianney. One could note that God was with him and in him. The blessings from his sermons and charisma of his words extended far and wide, and all over Europe pilgrimages started to come coming to ours. This was one of the reasons for the countless conversions that St. John made. He was also a martyr of the confessionary. He used to spend hours and hours there hearing confessions and giving counsels. It is said that he had the power of reading souls, and his knowledge of the hidden past and of future events was no less remarkable than his formal miracles. On one occasion, he made the interesting admission that hidden things seemed to come to him by way of memory. He once said to a certain woman, So it is you who have left your husband in the hospital and who refused to join him? She said, How do you know that? I have not mentioned it to a soul. I was more surprised than she, he said. I imagined that she had already told me the whole story. Another time, a baroness, a widow, was troubled with the determination of her 18-year-old son to marry a girl. She determined to consult St. John, but despairing she would never get to see him, suddenly he came out of his confessional and went straight up to her and whispered, Let them marry. They will be very happy. Another time, a servant girl was warned by him that a great pearl awaited her in lions. If few days later, the memory of this warning enabled her to escape from the hands of a murderer of girls. This extraordinary saint spent all his time in the church, either at the pulpit, in the confessional, or at the altar. At night, when he returned to his house, one might think he would at least get a deserved rest. But no, a new fight started, this time against the devil. For decades, he fought a nightly battle with the devil, whom he called Grappin, in which the devil physically assaulted him and tormented him with deafening noise noises and insulting words. On the night before a person particularly dominated by the devil would come to him to confess, the devil would inflict stronger torments on the saint. Once he set fire to his bed. In response, St. John Vinay used to increase his special penances and prayers to win the graces for his words to effect the needed conversions.
Toward the end of his life, in the year 1858-1859, over 100,000 pilgrims visited Ars. St. John was now a very old man of 73, and the strain was too much. On July 18th, he knew the end was at hand, and on the 29th, he lay down on his bed for the last time. But even as he lay dying, he sent for several souls to kneel by his bed and finish their confessions. As the news spread, people flocked to Ars from all sides. Twenty priests accompanied the Abbey Bio when he brought the last sacraments from the church. It is sad to receive Holy Communion for the last time, murmured a dying priest. On August 3rd, the Bishop of Belay arrived in haste, and at two o'clock in the morning on the 4th, amid a storm of thunder and lightning, the earthly life of St. John Vinay came to an end.